Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Jason. You are listening to Dice, Dice in, in My Mind. So after our, uh, I guess, session zero, um, where um, you um, created your character, Fried Roger. Fred Rogers. Fried Roger. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and that's all one word, Fried Roger. Yes. And um, the other character that I had kind of generated, which won't be used because of the crazy name you gave it, um, I made some course corrections. And last episode, we talked about how um, I was modifying um, the D&D duet yeah. adventure called First Blush. And this is from um, Jonathan and Beth Ball, dnddduet.com. Yep. Great um, introductory introductory well, yep. introductory introductory adventure and it's one player one dm um for this i have not introduced sidekicks or um dmpcs yeah keeping it lean keeping it lean and for this episode we are continuing um, and i'm going to we're going to change it up just a little bit where we're going to play with a what shall we say um a rule set that has been heavily influenced by Dungeons and Dragons, yet allows for a megaton of DM prerogative, which I, which is still, I mean, legit D and D. Which and and I'm doing that because I want to make it maybe just a little more interesting. Move, yeah, moves quicker. Yeah, for the five of you that actually are listening to this episode. Right. So thanks, Brian, for actually uh, listening to me. So that yes, yeah, right. for actually <laughs> subscribing and having it automatically download and make us look better. So as we left um, the last session, you had finished, in effect, was a training obstacle course. Right. Before heading off with Master Elias. Right. Um, And you are um, heading on your way towards the homeland coast. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. You just left or you just met at the gate, town gate. Yep. And you are now um, leaving. And as you exit the town and move along you have walked for um I'm, again little dm prerogative here going forward you've walked for a good four hours it's been a long walk mm-hmm. um it's time master elias is obviously very old you know, very old but he's older yep um and he needs some rest yep so he's walking along you could tell he's starting to slow down but then all of a sudden he kind of as much as he can kind of abruptly stops and turns over to you and in a weary voice points and says, do you see that? And he's pointing at um, what looks to be like a, a, an outcropping of rock. Okay. And it just seems out of place. Okay. Um, And you're on a road. It is, it is much like Prairie. Mm -hmm. So not a ton of trees. Mm -hmm. It's not a forest, but um, the, the, the rock just seems out of place in terms of what you're noticing around okay. you on the prairie. Yeah. Um, I'll walk over to the rock. Okay. You walk over to the rock and you notice that there is what amounts to be um, a hole. Okay. For lack of a better term, a hole in the ground. But you notice that there are some very decrepit, and worn out stone stairs that walk you into this hole. And they're very mm. steep. They're very steep mm-hmm. stairs. So um, if you do it, you're going to have to just be very cautious. Yeah. Because these stairs are sure. probably, you know, I would say, um, you know, twice as steep as what, what you would find on a regular stair step going into the inn or the tavern in town. Yeah. Okay. Though this time, my character's sober, so that's got to be a rolling with advantage. You got it. So Fred Rogers, kind of seeing this, he turns back to Master Elias, who I'm imagining is, you know, uh, you know, uh, 20, 15 feet he's away. He's actually, he's actually, good, he, good point. He's actually kind of walked up. So he's probably oh. about 10 feet behind you. He's a little slower, mm-hmm. and he uses his walking stick. So he's been kind of walking and obviously walking – Amongst prairie grass can be a little more challenging yep. than on a, a road or a path. Um, 
So he's about 10 feet behind you at this point. Okay, so uh, so Fred Rogers looks at Master Elias and just says, you know, Master, uh, I, I, there's something here. I'm curious. There's there are steps. They look a little, a little precarious. Why don't you hang out and rest here? Uh, I'm going to light a torch, and I'll be right back. You take before it you, easy. B- before you do that, my son, let me let me check. Let me sense if anything is here. And knowing that you know Master Elias has, um, as a wizard, has magical capabilities, yeah. you you sense kind of a, a glow coming from the entrance. And he's closed his mm. eyes and he's moving his hand a little bit. And um, he stops and he says, my son, you you have to be careful going down there. Are you sure you really want to do this? Well, I mean... It is a really big hole in the ground with stairs. It, it's it's almost as if I feel railroaded to go down into whatever is there. Wow, I need actually need you know what I need you know what I need for these things because we play this very analog. We don't. You're we talking about this before. We don't. Yeah, we've got really papers any, in front of each of us. Yeah, we 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 do this on purpose just to kind of limit technology. We like the analog nature of it, and I need to put up like I need to get like a paper that I can put up a sign that will say. You know, you are chaotic. Good. You're going to do something just because you feel the whim to do so. No, I you know? actually, it's funny you say that because I was looking at my chaotic good alignment, thinking he's going to go down no matter what. That's exactly. I mean, right. yeah, yeah that, that's exactly right. No, I'm glad we're in agreement on that because he. That's why I was thinking. You know, he'd probably say, "Look, look, you hang out here. He's not going to wait for Master Lies. So, so to that point, he's like, "No, no, it's, it's. I'll be fine. I appreciate your concern. Um, you hang out, rest." Have some of those snacks we packed. I'll be back in like 15 minutes tops. Okay. And he pulls out a torch, lights it. And okay. uh, I'm assuming it's dark down there after the first few steps. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's dark. You can see the first couple steps. Obviously, you know, it's mm. very steep. Yeah. Um, so you're going to you're going to. Yeah, he'll he'll anything? light the he'll light his torch and he'll carefully descend. Okay. Emphasis on carefully. I, it's much harder to do this recording because I have to like compose myself as yes. I pre- and so, you're smile oh, and you smiling at me as I'm trying to so, prepare this. Doesn't so, so, but as as he's doing that, before he like as he as he approaches, you know, mm-hmm. the entrance, whatever this is, he's gonna roll perception, um, okay. just to actually what if, rolling perception for what? Um, you know, I take that back. Um, this is the sequence I want to do it in since he's just standing up there at the entrance. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how wide is this hole? I mean several feet across i'm assuming not a difficult good question fit. it is it is i hole was really kind of a uh, maybe a misnomer of sorts think of it as about six by six yeah okay um he's going to take out a couple torches actually he's going to light one okay. and he's going to toss it down there kind of like um you know, kind of standing just at the lip, kind of like where he would imagine the steps. The steps kind of continue just beyond his line of sight, cut off from the top of the cavern. So he's just going to toss that down first. Hey, you're going to toss. You're going to toss the the torch. Okay, so you he's toss gonna, the torch. I mean, he's just you, dropping it down. Anytime nice. you throw something, know. you know that. You no, know. no, no, no. He's just going to toss it down the steps. Okay. You know, kind of like just seeing how, just to so see if he can. Of, you're going to kind yeah. of almost fling it in a way. Yeah, just as if you can shed some light. So you kind of hear. Okay. You don't hear anything hit bottom. Right. That's that's a good reason to toss a torch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my attempt at like sound effect. Sound yeah, that effect. was. that's why we are paying the big money for our sound effects. Yeah, and that's why um, this will probably be the last play play live we'll do for a while. But it, yeah. it will be. Yeah. Um <laughs> boy. Um I'm just I'm just looking here. Uh I'm not gonna mute by the way as we do this, folks, as I take a drink because yeah. of all yeah. talking. Yeah, and everyone should know it's got ice and it's not liquor. So <clears throat> nothing for us to get excited about. Oh, but no boost. No. Nope, no boost. Um man, he's gonna take one more. He's going to take one more torch lit um, and he's going to just kind of drop it like toward the last step he can see kind of the goal of can you just drop it several steps down, right? Not to just so it illuminates that. Okay. 
So you, you're you just going to drop it a couple steps down. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah. Just okay. to see if he can shed so can a little kinda, more light. You yeah. can kind of fling it, and you hear... And it drops about four steps. And you can see the first four steps. Yeah. And you can see the next four or five. But okay. that's really it. Okay, so he's going to carefully descend down okay. with another torch lit in his hand. Just kind of like to a couple steps above where that one is sitting. Okay. Essentially just enough that he can peek under the room of the entrance. Oh, I really got to... Okay. No, nope. yeah. No, no, keep going. Oh, keep going. No, that's it. I And he's going to okay. roll perception just to see what... You know, he doesn't have dark vision or anything like that, but just to see... You're rolling he, perception before you start walking? N- or No, no, he's just... I mean... I'm imagining from what you're describing, we're only talking about going down three steps, four steps. I mean, basically enough that he can get, I don't know, like like get waist deep just to peek. He's still above. He's going to stop above wherever that torch landed. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and go ahead and roll. And he, he wants, I want to be able to like look, because I'm imagining this is a horizontal opening more or less. Yeah, just go and ahead and so, roll. So, I know yeah. already I'm going to, you know. Okay. Oh. Natty one. Okay. So it doesn't really... So, so you, well, look, yeah. you, you look as you I take mean, for that a total of step, six, but... Yeah, you look and it's just black. Okay. Other than the four steps you see after um, the torch. After the torch, okay. Mm-hmm. He inches back up the steps. Okay. And he's like, you know, Master Elias, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. And he he starts to scout around that okay, rock so or rot outcrop. You had you had you had taken one step down, right? Oh, however many, yeah, you tell me. However okay. many. Yeah. So you had taken three steps down. So you start to back up. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. But as you do that, um the step behind you gives out. The stone and... step. Stone step. Okay. So no sooner did you do that, but now all of a sudden you uh, feel like you are falling. I can imagine. So you hear, you're going to have to add the sound effect later. (laughs) (laughs) So for those, I don't know if you could hear that. Yeah, we can hear it. Okay. So those that didn't, there was a little bit. Wild E. Coyote. Fall. yeah so um you fall down the only i i tried to find that most famous sound of of wiley coyote when he does that that yelp um <laughs> you know where you don't you don't uh um, you don't hear the crash but i well, guess I, I couldn't i, I couldn't think, do that I on think last minute yeah I think, I think, so you fall um and the torch that's lit yeah is falling with you. Yep. It feels like falling. Um, and when you suddenly realize you've fallen enough that the um, the landing is probably going to cause some damage. Yes. Um, you feel like you kind of soft landed. Okay. And um, you you know you don't feel other than the um, the, the being disconcerted by. Yeah that go ahead and do me a favor and, and roll dexterity for me i shall roll dexterity 20 okay so you land softly and um you land kind of on all fours okay knees and hands yep um no worse for the wear okay no, pain, no injury interesting you see the um the torch that was on you see two torches yep and you can tell you are in a relatively small you know not a small room but not a big one probably about um 25 feet okay wide by about 15 feet you know in length okay. and in front of you you see a door a door with a handle a regular handle you don't see any sort of key lock or anything of the sort the Room is lit by your torches. Uh-huh. So the torch light from two torches gives you enough. Yeah. Yeah. To see the whole room. There's nothing else in there. Wooden door. Wooden door. Uh, he's going to walk up and put his ear against the door 
just well enough to to, to I, I can roll if you want to to hear hear if there's anything. Yeah, um, do it. Do, go ahead and, and roll perception. Let's just see. Twenty five. Okay, you put your ear to the door, and it's 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 a thick door. Um, you really don't hear anything, and there's no keyhole, like I said, or key lock in any way. So it's, it's just it's a latch. A, it's a it's a solid wooden door with a latch. Okay, he he gives the the door a push, not a big one, but enough to move it. Um, the, you push the door, and nothing happens. And as you do that, you look to your left, and you see that the hinges are on this side of the door, meaning that um, the door needs to be pulled to be open. There it is. Okay. Um, so he grabs his longbow, okay, in one hand. And with the other, probably the left hand, uh, opens opens the door okay. S- slowly, but but opens the door. Right. So you open the door. It's dark. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can tell it's almost like a hallway. Okay. By it's about, in 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 the height, I should probably tell you it's about it's about twenty feet high. Oh. Okay. And. In front of you is looks to be kind of a hallway with the little light from your torches. It's about uh-huh. five feet, about five feet wide, and okay. again about yeah. twenty feet tall. That can't be good. And it's just a, a darkened hall. This is okay. a there is it's a dirt floor. Okay, and it is stone sides. So yep, this stone is all, walls. This uh-huh. is all carved out. Or yeah, okay, built in some way. So he's gonna. Stow the longbow. He's going to grab a short sword in one hand, a uh, lit torch in the other. In, okay. in fact, he'll just go back for one of those torches. Are you going to leave the other one there? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you've got your law. Lo- you've got your, um, what'd you say? Short sword. Short, short yeah, sword. Cause then I can torch. hold that with one, with yes. one hand. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, and he's going to start to slowly make his way forward. Uh, torch in the left hand, short sword in the right hand. Um, kind of you know five, ten feet at a time, just stopping every several steps to to listen. Um, okay, and definitely looking up in case you can see any. Though I, it's probably all dark. As you move forward, about five feet in it, it's just a darkened yeah hallway yeah. Um, but you notice. About five feet in, you see a small uh, leather pouch okay. on the ground. Mm-hmm. Nudge it with my sword. <laughs> okay. Um, nudge it with your sword. Yeah. Um, it just it doesn't move or anything. Okay. Just is there. Oh, I'll pick it up. Okay. As you pick it up, um, you feel a real uh, tingling and heat in your hand. Um, which hand, by the way, did you pick it up with? Uh, probably in my... S- I'm trying to think what I would... Probably would have done it in the sword hand, just yeah. kind of with a couple, with a few fingers, you know? Okay. Yeah. So you go to pick it up with your sword hand and yeah. you feel this intense burning sensation uh. and it requires you to drop the pouch i drop it and grab some desinex and you well hold on right. and you drop the sword and um and and you could feel your hand just really hot okay really hot like it felt burned yeah but you look at your hand yeah and it looks normal except there is now um what looks to be in common tongue the letter l almost burned into your hand as a darker color Okay, that can't be good. So, okay, so um, I pick up the sword and I uh, I slash at the bag on the floor. Okay, you know, with with you, the notion of trying to split it open. Yeah. So you slash at the bag. Yeah. The bag moves, and it looks like there is a little cut in the bag, but your your hand definitely. Um, has this burning sensation mm-hmm. from this letter and yeah. let this letter that seems to be and it's not burned and it's not stabbed or calloused in any way but um 
you just can't help but being in your head thinking you just picked up a pouch got right earth pouch and, and here Le him, <laughs> yes great thank you okay yes. After, yeah after. at least it's on my hand and not my forehead <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah so okay. you pick it up there's a little um little cut in the pouch and you can sense, you can see that there's a little bit of glowing from it. Inside. Inside the. Cut it open more. Okay. So you cut it open more and all of a sudden out of this pouch comes a um, green gem. Translucent and glowing. Okay. Well, I'm not going to pick up that sucker again. <laughs> <laughs> There's many different ways to ponder this, my friend. It could be that the bag. Yeah, I it it's uh, I I reach out mm -hmm. again. Yeah, I put my sword away. Put the okay. sword on its on its uh, on its hook, and I I reach I reach out just an inch or so above the gem to feel for any heat or anything else. It feels cool. It feels cool, but on the flip side, yeah. You feel like a a warmth over you. I pick it up. Okay. So you pick up this gem. Yeah. And again, green gem, translucent. Um, and do me a favor and um, roll wisdom for me. All right. Rolling wisdom. 18. And in your head, you remember stories all over Homeland. Yeah. As you should know, having played in elsewhere, yes. that these gems are appearing oh. in random places at random times with random people, mm -hmm. different colors. You've heard some stories, perhaps, that there might be some unusual properties to these gems. Yeah. But... Um, you now seem to be one of the lucky that has encountered one of these gems. No one knows if it was um, the gods that had left yeah. the gems or if it was something that had uh, is manifesting itself from the creator. But you know from your experiences and your knowledge that that this seems very yeah. similar to the stories that you yeah heard. i uh i pocketed i put it in pocket in my pants i think i i because i'm wearing yeah i'm wearing scale mail i don't think i want to put it in a shirt pocket and i i don't want to just put it in my pack so i'll just pocket it for now okay that's fine mm -hmm. you pocket the gem yeah. you, you are no worse for the wear for that okay in any very way, good shape, um i draw a short sword once again okay and proceed forward okay so you walk probably another 15 feet forward okay and you come to the end of this hallway mm -hmm. and you see it opens into what looks to be a room you're still in the hallway but it oh. looks to be a room okay um walk to the you know walk past the entrance to the room uh roll perception to see what i can see as i kind of arc around with my with my torch. Okay. Uh, uh, 14. Okay. Um, you see the room is probably around 15 feet wide. Uh-huh. And about twice as long. Okay. Okay. Um, similar to the room that you entered. But in that room, there are... Um, this is going to be a, a small, smaller yep. spires, um, stone spires, uh -huh. and they are um, set in a way that um, it has created almost a path yeah. down. And these are stone pyres, um, and you see that okay. they, they run down the length of the room. Okie doke. Hmm. How sep uh, how much space are they separated by? Um, as best you could tell, because you've just walked in the room, you're yeah. looking, you're able to look. They seem to be about five feet apart. Yeah. Okay. And about uh, five by five. So five feet. Yep. 
between them okay. and five still, feet. Still, still no illumination other than from my torch. Correct. Okay, I'm going to proceed with caution uh, amidst the spires. Okay. Um, you walk down um, past the first set of spires. Uh huh. Nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. You walk about ten feet in past the second set of spires. Nothing out of the ordinary. And you get to the third set of spires. Uh -huh. um, you don't see anything out of the oh wait roll for initiative. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. I had to say that was very um that was very sedate. I know. Okay. Um oh there's my initiative. Okay. So 17. Okay. So um To Looks like Mr. Rogers' work. neighborhood just got rougher. So uh, Fried Roger comes up and sees um, this tiny, devilish-looking character. Oh, well, crap. And it it is uh, staring at you. It's corporeal. Um, it's it's a little creature. It's a little creature. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it is of a... It, it has it's different it, it's it's reddish in uh, i'm itself. i'm going to uh, brr, uh well you tell me um i want to just take a free action and roll perception before i engage but perception nature i mean what would be an appropriate role to see if i can recognize it um Well, this is a background. This is a knowledge issue. So why don't right. you roll wisdom? Okay. Okay. Very good. You know, I I think I think. Well, you know what? I, I know straight wisdom. Maybe perception is better. Um, let's 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 roll perception. Let's do okay. perception. Twenty. Okay. Um, you recognize this from your sto from the stories you've yeah. heard. You believe this to be some sort of impish character. Okay. Um, and um, it has. Um, little wings with it and it has what looks to be kind of like a, a scorpions type tail ah. um how far away is it you it is about five feet yeah to sorry. your right okay and so between pillars spires uh it is actually outside of the spire oh, okay. on your right okay thank you okay um and no sooner do you do you yep. see the impish character yeah. that you see that spire disappear. Oh. So now there is a missing spire yep. in this Shh. room. There is a spire. If you're facing yep. straight ahead as you were, the spire to your right fades away where, and you yeah. see that imp has right moved there. within there. The spire okay. to your left still is there as well as the ones behind you. That's good to know. Um, and it hasn't attacked me, so I'm assuming I have initiative. You have initiative. Uh, <clears throat> well, true to his chaotic good nature, mm -hmm. uh, he he turns to the imp and says, Hey, little buddy, what are you doing down here? And then he readies an action. Okay. And to ready that action, uh, I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to stay put and... Uh, if it makes any move toward me, I will strike out with my short sword. Okay. So um, you notice this as an impish character. Yep. He has kind of a devilish type of look to him. Wow. Um, as you know, imps have the ability to shapeshift. Yeah. So. Um, Good times. And for the sake of us during this uh, combat round, mm -hmm. um, them being able to shapeshift will be the uh, considered a free action. Yep. Okay. So, Seems fair. Um, being um, five feet away. Yep. Um, it has, you notice, what looks to be um, torn, worn leather armor. Okay. And a rusty short sword. Okay. Which seems relatively unusual for a, a creature that may want to shape shift into something right. else that can't take advantage of those so right that, right interesting. I, I will I, it, it, just as an aside you might yeah. find that a little interesting interesting he does um 
take a um, swing at you. Oh, then I'm going to... I am readied. Okay. And, and I shall... He is going to um, take well, a really I, good swing. I, but get to, I get to respond first. Because I readied my action. You're right. Yes. Ha. All right. So he, <laughs> he is closing El Gapo. No, just make sure you're checking and making sure that you've counted I, everything. I'm, I'm doing right? it right now. Okay. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. I don't um, want you. I don't want you to accidentally die. Yeah, I so. don't want to accidentally die. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay, here you go. Oh, well, that sucks. Um, let's see. Plus, oh well, that's terribly disappointing. Um, and I've got to do so. Uh, so eight. Terrible okay. roll. Terrible roll. So you swing your short sword, and without yeah. the extra yeah. comedic. Uh, wah, material wah, I provided wah. last. We'll just yeah. say that you swung and uh, completely missed. Completely In the missed. meantime, yeah, um, he has taken a swing at you okay, okay. and uh, completely misses as well. And you hear him. It's it's a it's not a dragon shriek, yeah. but it is a shriek. Interesting. And, um, well, it does no damage or stun yeah, or anything yeah. like that. It is very disconcerting to you because you okay. can tell its rage is building. Okay, he he. Uh... Fred just says, hey, little guy, flashes him a smile. He's like, hey, don't get frustrated. I'm sure your next swing will be much better. And then he swings again. Okay, go ahead and swing. Uh, 19. Okay, then go ahead and roll for damage for me. Okay, that's only a d6. Two damage. Okay, so you uh, take a swing, and yep. you, you get a nice little gash on him, just that shoulder at his his left shoulder. Um, yeah. And he again shrieks. And the only thing the shriek does is it's just very disconcerting yeah. to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and as he does it, obviously now he's just darn tootin' ornery yeah. and uh, takes, feeling a little impish. Yeah. Takes a swing at you Rot -rot. and um, hits you for four points of damage. Well, I don't care for that. All right. Uh, he swings again. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, there's no question it's a hit. Uh, for 23. Okay. Another two points of damage. Okay. Now you hear him. Um, he's not necessarily talking in common or anything like that. You just... <laughs> and he takes another swing at you and um nicks you for one point of damage mm. fred's like okay that that's starting to hurt little guy thought we were going to be friends but i don't i don't know what's happening here um uh oh, you, you could still you could just now he's just he's just constantly grumbling <laughs> and talking and but you don't understand what yeah um Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, his his mirror, uh, his sorry, <laughs> don't ask him. Look at him. So his movement speed is is it the same as a human? Is it is it like thirty feet? He's a little he's a little slower. He's twenty feet. Okay, so thank you. So um, Fred is going to. Well, who's that? Fred. Ooh. Roger. Okay. Uh, Fred Rogers is going to um, disengage. Right. Okay. He's going to do a full. Well, I got to think for a sec. So, yeah, he's going to do a full 30 feet back, which okay. is probably going to put him, what, uh, 10 to 15 feet into the hallway? You, 10 are, now, feet in? you are now 10 feet yeah. into the hallway again. Okay. He's going to do that. And as. Well, I guess I can't do anything. So, so, um, mm -hmm. and he just calls out, "Be right back." Okay. Well, you could still hear. You could still hear the. <laughs> he makes his move a full twenty feet, and so he is ten feet away from you in that hall. Right at the end, he's at like the entrance to the hallway. Perfect. Um. Uh. Fred is going to. 
trying to get the sequence here right. Fred is going to disengage another 30 feet. Okay. Which probably puts him back into the room, yes? So, yes, you okay, so, are. So, sorry, let me stop. Let me you were gonna, if you do that, you're going to yeah. almost be against the wall. Perfect. The Sorry. Fred's going to drop the torch as a free action okay. and disengage 30 feet into the room. Okay. You are now, in effect, against the back entrance yeah. yep. where there are no stairs. Where there are no there. stairs. Correct. Yes. But and there there's, is. And a, there's, there's rubble from but the there stairs. Is. Okay. There is a torch. Yes. Okay. Yes. So okay. you can the the hallway is illuminated, right? Yep, the hallway is illuminated and, and the, the entrance room is illuminated. Yep. And um and he's just going to cuz we'll play up this chaotic good. He's going to be say something to the effect of, "Hey little guy, come and get me. I'm in here." Okay. So you can still you can still hear the emperor. And it moves in. So um should be about 10 feet in front of me. He's still 10 feet in front of you. Um, yeah, I suppose brace isn't a, a an no, action. Probably not. Unfortunate. No. Um, you're not on an airliner or a no. starship, so he's going to drop his short sword and draw his longbow. Okay. And then he's going to move. I'll allow you to. Um, fire a bolt if you want to. Oh, sure. Works for me. Thanks. Okay. I, was gonna, I could almost get the geometry to work if I went into the corner, but yep. now, now I have to worry. You don't have to. Added. You don't have to fire a bolt. Oh, you don't have no, to. I would be happy to. Thank you for okay. asking. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, I'm going to now seek out the die that okay. As you shot do that, out of my... We'll do a... <laughs> Here we go. Uh, no, I found it. Okay. I'm good. I'm I was going to do a commercial for um, bum, bum, dungeon bum, maps bum, bum, bum. for the Ooh, game master please do which is uh, 50 unique maps and dot grid pages and that is where um, the material oh. comes from tonight in addition and from, who who wrote that who designed that this is one of the books i picked up and ironically it, it i'll have to go back and look because i took right. the, the page out but oh, got we'll it. make sure to put it in the show notes it's Excellent. dungeon maps for the game master and All it's right. got some um and cool. for the folks that are listening, it's I'm using map 47 from that book. All right. Okay, here we go. Righto. Um, let's see. That is 18. Okay, roll for damage. Damage. Five points of damage. Okay. Because, I mean, so, he did just take a longbow bolt at yeah. 10 feet. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, that went right through, like, below his neck and, uh -oh. in effect, above um, his chest bone. Above so, the sternum? Yeah. Ouch. So it's, it's you know, it's here. But obviously, yeah. you know, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to die. But you've obviously yeah. um, wounded him. And so using a little bit of creativity on my part, he is going to stumble forward. Yeah. And, um, and take a swing at you. And because of his his injuries and all that, it, it's it's feeble. It's feeble. Okay. He's missed. Okay. Uh, hey, buddy. He says, "Don't don't sweat it. This will be over soon." Um, and uh, I don't think I don't think anyone who would have used a similar name to the no. character that you created would ever call anyone <laughs> little buddy. You know. <laughs> hey, hey, you know my van's just out back, little buddy. Yeah. Okay. Um, then you've now there you've, it is. You have now we've crossed the line. Committed sacrilege. Uh, yes. So, um, uh, Fred Rogers backs what? Fred Roger. <laughs> Fred Roger backs into. Well, no, I guess he can't. So. So he's still he's he's within five feet of You're he'll just fire feet. he'll just okay. he'll just fire he'll he'll just okay. he'll just draw one more bolt okay oh, okay I should probably roll that first hold on I'm Wrong going die. to and you're gonna you're gonna be not at and not at um I want you to roll with disadvantage so I want you to roll twice and choose the lower why because you're you're using okay, a well, long bow within like five feet it's like yeah yeah fair enough I just okay that was. Oh, it could get lower. I was wrong. So okay. <laughs> seven. <laughs> okay. So you fire that bolt 
but being so close, it gave him the opportunity Pew. to dodge. So right. it just it you aim that makes you had sense. It, aim, it just barely yeah. missed his yeah. his head. Okay, um, and he's just um, he takes another swing. He's on about at something. You and um, he does give you a nick for uh, three points of damage. Ouch! I okay. Yeah, Fred Rogers is a first level character whoops is starting to look a little bloodied up um uh you know what by my calculation he doesn't have a whole lot of hit points left would that be accurate i think you're i think you can assume that he's he's Um, he's kind of on the the edge of non-existence i would say that's sore but he's he's just gonna go he's just gonna go for a good swift kick okay okay um so let's see here because i'm trying to think what that that's worth what is that like a d2 well i'm going to allow because d4 i'm going to allow you to roll it roll a d4 for well let me let me i i mean i okay or roll roll d20 11 uh well that would be strength uh yeah that would be strength so d20 um, what did you yeah yeah so that's 15 okay so go ahead and roll a d4 D4. yeah yeah uh one point okay so you give him a swift kick um, it hits him uh, right between the legs. That is um, where I was aiming. You, yeah, and all of a sudden you hear, <laughs> and he falls over dead. Well, it's unfortunate so, we and our listeners had that, to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> it was either that or, yes. or never mind. We'll move on. Um, he immediately kind of um, disintegrates into ash. Interesting. And what you have left is um, a gem. This gem oh. is now the other gem was uh-huh. probably a little smaller than the palm of your hand. Yeah. Um, to call this a gem would be maybe uh, I'm I'm understating it. This one is this one is is a good size in your hand and it's orange. Interesting. So, or you haven't picked it up, but that's what the size. He's. Is. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach down, kind of do the thing. Do I feel anything near it? You feel extraordinary cold. Um, Mm -hmm. cold, but you don't feel that same type of that warmth feeling from it. But, um, go ahead and do me a favor and, um, roll perception for me again. 17. Okay. You notice that this gem it's cold. Um, but you don't have any sense that it's going to, uh, hurt in any way so you can pick okay it up if you okay then to. yeah he'll pick it up then he'll he'll stow his longbow he'll go he'll go get his short sword okay and which is nearby and he'll grab this this gem as well okay this gem is it's translucence is minimal uh-huh um it doesn't glow as much as the green gem does it is cold to the touch yeah um, but you don't sense any interesting um, damage or okay. anything that's going to harm you. So you pick that up. You are again at the beginning. Okay. So I've got the orange, the large orange jewel with me. Um, I'm going to put that in my pack. Okay. Uh, I've got my stuff stowed. going to leave the torch there um, uh, in the hallway. Uh, I'm going to pick up that torch that I left. And I'm going to proceed back carefully to that uh, that second room. Okay. Uh, and I'm I'm curious. I'm assuming the third spire on the right is gone. I'm, I'm assuming it has not returned. It has not returned. No. Um. And before I go the rest of the way through that room, I want to roll. <sighs> uh, it's a it's a better roll. I'm going to roll perception. What do you? What do you... What are, you, what are you looking yeah, for? I, I want to, sp- I just want to, with the torch nearby for light, I just want to take a glance at some of those other spires. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Nope. It's fifth. It's 12. Okay. Well, you roll and you just notice that the spires are all, it. they are, they are spires. They aren't necessarily smoothly chiseled in yeah. any way. Yeah. Um, but, um, and they are pointed at the top. But nothing seems out of the ordinary. Can I tell how wide is the room? The room is around 15 feet wide and oh, twice so, as long. So I, I don't have any okay, I don't have any problem seeing the walls of the room then. No. 
Okay, so I'm going to continue those other 15-ish feet forward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, yeah, to the other end. I, what's, what's there? Okay, so at the end of that hallway, you um, see that there's another room. Um, and the room um, looks to be as you, if you if you were to enter it from where you are at the okay. entrance, um, it opens up on your left, but the wall remains on your right, if that makes sense. Okay. Yep. So, and as you do that, you suddenly feel um, a really, really increasing feeling of cold coming from that room interesting and as you do that you can feel the wind kind of coming at you oh um from that room it's extraordinarily cold and that's where we're gonna stop so yeah so um just a little post-mortem on this so you know transparent we never we never really had anticipated doing any sort of live playish type of stuff and we got so busy and um, just so into in a positive way doing all this podcast stuff. We just yep. never had time to play. Nope. So we thought it'd be an opportunity for us to kind of mix them. Um, it's been um, for me being inexperienced gamers it, from in this realm, um, you know, and I, and we've played before, but we aren't, you know, we aren't polished like others. It, it it was a challenge for me to find a way to do this live play without it putting people to sleep but on the flip side um without going into and without trying to play in a way that you don't you and i don't play you know we yeah tend to we tend to be more cerebral when we play um that's just how we operate that's how which, we like which to. is code for boring yeah that's well that kind of is but it is but you know it's funny is is that whenever we play um with the worlds we build and such as that we always have, it's funny when, we, when you um, GM in the star Wars realm um, with me GMing in this realm in the Homeland arena and all that, there are larger themes that we always tend to gravitate to there are. as overarching themes around, um, right. Around the games. We, I, we, we don't, I like... we aren't just simply a, uh, slash and hack dungeon crawl type of thing oh no, i would not. love to play them it's just yeah we never end up doing that we never just... end up doing that because i i like creating stories with droids yep and you like creating stories that kill my pcs yes and there's <laughs> right? and there's yes that you make you make that sound so wrong um no, no judgment no but you know it tends to be with mine we we have <laughs> um there's there's an overarching with homeland and you know this there's an overarching theme around uh, uh faith and i don't that's not even the right word um well, higher no, being something greater it, than themselves it is because i mean i've i've had a an interest in droid based religion almost since oh, you're we right, got yes. back in uh, i just find it so interesting ever since we got back into role playing in in um well, right around this time, actually, uh, right around this time, six years ago, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, six years ago. And so I just, yeah, I do find that provocative. I, I, I have to say. Well, and, and interesting you bring that up too, because we're in the G, we're in the GM corner, so we can kind of talk freer. Um, yeah. Outside of theme. Um, you'll be in town to mm -hmm. visit me and our other, yep. other friends in our group next weekend. Yep. yep. Um, and six years ago, you were doing that very same thing when we went to a game store, and that kind of really re-triggered it. Yeah. So yeah. what you were talking about in terms of when we kind of restarted six years ago was because mm -hmm. you were in town and because yeah. we went to a game store. I had – actually, okay, actually, sorry. I'm going to – I think I'm going to correct that a little bit. That that happened almost a year later. Really? Yeah. So it wasn't just five years ago. Was it, it was because no. I – or well, I can. Um, it well, regardless of whether it was five or six, I I got back into it, and then it took the better part of a year to convince you guys to to hey, why don't 
why don't we give it a shot? Um, because otherwise it would have been literally like weeks after I got back in and I didn't have any of that stuff yet. I think, you know, if I do a, just as a, cause you and I do a lot of communicating on email. Yeah. 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 Right. And this, and if I just do a quick email search as we talk about it, I go back into the email time machine and our first articles, because we started originally talking Pathfinder. Yeah. Was, um, December of 2017. Yep. Yep. And then I, I convinced you and Brian to do, to, to, to do a star Wars adventure with me because that's what I knew. Yep. You're Mm -hmm. right. Five. It just, it feels it on one hand, it feels like it was much longer. It does. It's been been much longer. It does. But you know, we've been doing the podcast for a little over a year now. Uh Uh-huh. Um, uh uh-huh. year and a half and that's, now, yeah. Yeah, and that and yeah. that's taken up that takes up so, so much uh that's a bad way of putting it. It it generates so much creative it does creative it, juices it does. that I lose track of how long we've been doing this other type of stuff with gaming. Yeah, it's 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 true. So I think the the important lesson for our listeners to take away is not to worry. Next week <laughs> Thank we you. are yes. We are back to interviews. We really want to give ourselves a, a, a hand at actual play. Like you said, Brad, we, more than anything, we just wanted an excuse to play a bit. And and you um, all have to be subject to it if you've actually decided to listen to what you downloaded. That's right. So. But but rest assured, um, we have sown those oats. And now it's time to get back in the saddle. In fact, the the reality, the truth is to, as Brad would say, to peel back the fourth wall. We already have two interviews recorded and produced and waiting to drop. And then there's a third one we'll be recording next week. And so so we we've been busy. Uh, we intentionally inserted these uh this experiment of actual play and i think we've probably we've probably decided that we much prefer we much prefer interviewing and talking about the stuff and the high level stuff you've already named the episode i didn't even get on to the to the well, don't say anything because we, we, we might well, i'm not going to i'm just it, saying yes. that normally when we talk about this the episode naming you are you are the most creative when it comes to episode naming uh, by far um, when we do oh. this type of thing where it's not an interview with someone, uh, but it's, I mean, you literally, um, and, and a lot of the episode naming comes outside of here, even yeah. from different well, I, than episode fact, episodes. I, I appreciate it because I just, I just changed it. Uh, as soon as you said that it occurred to me, uh, I changed it so that it harkens back. It's a, an homage to friends. Okay. 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 So we'll see. I'll have, uh, to, I'll have to read. I'll have to, yeah. It yeah. You'll 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 see yet, it. But... You'll you'll see it. Uh, there's a lot so, of yeah, friends so we, watching in my house. We have. Um, so yes, we have um, two interviews in the books. We mm-hmm. soon will have another soon, one completed, yeah. um, and yeah. that'll be an interesting one because we've we've we had. Um, We'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. And then after that, coming towards the end of the year, we've talked about it. We won't get into it now. Um, mm-hmm, we're going to talk mm-hmm. a bit about gaming and mental health. Yeah. At a time of year yeah. where mental health is we're, a concern. We're, we're going to, yeah, we're going to spend, and we're going to spend, we'll see. I just think, uh, and we'll, we'll wrap with this. I think that uh, as we've been saying in recent episodes in the DM or the GM corners that um, I think you and I want to do more than an episode around that. And uh, and we're gonna save it so that those we're gonna time it so that those drop um, around the holidays for many people, and especially around the New Year season for um, for the world, uh, but also the the dark winter season for you know half of the world for the northern hemisphere. Those of us here, um, and you know if you live as far north as we do, uh, um, it's it's dark, and I and I love it, but but many don't. And so that's, uh, that's the plan. So we are going to have about a handful, a good handful of interviews coming your way. And then a couple episodes where, where we're probably just going to talk the two of us uh, from both uh, a professional as well as an everyday set of perspectives 
um, and what we think about uh, the attitudes toward mental health that we see in the RPG and RPG adjacent communities. And I, and just a sidebar, because we, we don't talk politics on here. That's just, um, but we've seen it. You mentioned it before we even yeah. recorded on Twitter. Yeah. There's a lot of talk because we just went through a midterm election cycle. And I know for a lot of folks that that yeah. was yeah. Um, a stressful event in yeah. many ways, a traumatic event, and it is affecting people's mental health. So, yeah. um, you know, mm-hmm. chin up folks. I get it. We both get it. Um independent of any political persuasions we know that people out there are struggling with it mm-hmm. you know. it's a difficult time it's a difficult yeah. time at, with this long of the effects of the pandemic with what is now indisputably uh, in inflation in, in the marketplace uh it's just a difficult time for lots and lots of people and you see it everywhere and so we're going to talk about that through the lens of rpgs and what they can offer us on one good note i have not seen inflation hit the prices yet related to rpg books thank goodness that's true probably because they priced them so long ago and they're still waiting to deliver yeah pretty much or the fact that i'm buying enough to keep demand yeah you might single-handedly be keeping (laughs) you you are the rpg fed yeah and i know i can say that because there's no way on this earth my wife would ever one listen to this episode no no or two listen this far into this episode that's oh oh no oh no i think you're safe and i think you know if we can try to do maybe we just do while you're here next week we just do the gm corner we do whatever we're going to do with the episode it's a really good Um, idea yeah you know what we keep that plan but if we can record a, a, a a gm corner in the same room maybe we can actually get uh mrs brad to show up um sure sure yeah. anything is possible yes anything yes. is possible and i will she'll she'll show up and that'll be right after i finish my marathon so you know run anything is possible <laughs> no no as we as we say the only time i run is from the police and two buffets so 50 percent of that is right <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for uh, bearing with us as we sowed our oats with these actual play. That experiment is done. And uh, next week, uh, we will start a run of approximately five interviews with uh, a really diverse array of, of people, a really diverse array of creatives, uh, artists, writers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's really cool stuff, uh, crossing genres. So, uh, we hope you will, uh, come back and stick around as always. Be well, stay well. See you next week.